Good day and positive vibrations. This is Major. And welcome to Major TV Let's Talk. In conjunction with news, facts, and comments, shout out to Cody, my partner in crime. As you can see, the video is entitled, Why Jim J of Infact Failed Infact in the Black Community. I had a year or so to think about it because I see how whenever you speak about Jim J in fact, people come out in groves. People come out from nowhere. Some of you probably never heard of, some of you probably heard of, that have so much to say when you critique in fact. Before I get into my reasons for talking about this topic, no one on the sun is above criticism. Let me completely articulate myself in a very candid way. No one is above criticism. Jim J did not make history. There is nothing on the sun that anyone did, nobody else had been done. Let's let's just talk about history. Let's 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 understand the plight of melanated people, black people, people of color, whatever you want to call yourself, natives, what have you. Fighting for liberation from an oppressed regime, from a people that thought or felt you're less than them. We know about the Sojourner Truth. We know about Harry Tugner. Let's talk about two notable figures that that um that we have to really bring things in full context when they come down and being on and responding. Your know, one that come to mind is Nat Turner, and it's been documented a movie made about Nat Turner, how he was a preacher and how he was indoctrinated and believed in a certain kind of way under a Christian mindset from whites, right? Until he had this revelation that he had to stand up and liberate his people. And we know the story about him getting armed, getting other former slaves, people to respond with action, right? And there's another person of white descent Joan Brown's children. That's been well documented. They, they are the um, people that we know that are going to go down in infamy as white people fighting white people, looking at melanated people, black people, people of color, whatever you call yourself, as human beings and men and what have you, right? It's the first time in this country we, we know of something like that you're not familiar with. People Melanated people have always been armed post-slavery. We know about the 1920s revolt and, and throughout the century of blacks having to stand up against whites because they were jealous. They didn't like to see black people who was former slaves or was natives having more than what they have Etc. And we talk about the 1920 revolts. We have to be mindful. It was different back then than now. We say it's not too much different. It's a whole lot. It was a whole lot different then. Even though I feel that we are still segregated, but it's not like that. Back then, you could not go on the other side of the um, tracks. You could not get caught outside at night. Right? We're talking about Asian military men that was in the military that brought guns in their neighborhood and was ready. And, and one, one thing that come to mind is in Tulsa, Black Wall Street, right? When allegedly a young black man spoke that touched allegedly a white woman in the elevator inappropriately. Blacks got on, right? It went down to the jail to make sure that they don't come out and hang the brother, right? A shot was fired, and we know the story about it, right? And they did a great job fighting against the resistance of the white community until the government came in and dropped bombs on, took sides, so to speak. 
And Tulsa just won. There was several incidents where we're at, black people had to be on. And this time, it wasn't about demonstrating. It wasn't about just holding a gun and saying, we're not going to tolerate this. It was about standing up and knowing that you can die. And we know a lot of people had died. I want people to understand what was going on in the 1920s, 1930s. And you got to realize during the Great Depression, black people still thrive and did good in the Great Depression. Now, let's fast forward to Monroe, Louisiana, the Deacon Defense, right? It's the first time, and, 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 and what we know, there was a standoff against the Ku Klux Klan and the white structure that was treating black people real bad. Wasn't giving proper wage, wasn't hiring them, was mistreating them, etc. The Deacon of Defense decided to get on, right? Stand up, go before the oppressor and demand their rights. Demand equal treatment. It was willing to go all the way where they had to secretly talk about how to avoid what they would call a race riot, right? And this inspired what? The Black Panther Party, right? We're talking about men. We talked about the 1923. We're talking about men going up and going to close into the Black Power movement, but Pride, but getting close to it, right? In Louisiana, where they got on and fought the Ku Klux Klan, right? Whereas they stood up, right? And then let's talk about the Black Panther movement and the Black Liberation movement, right? Let's talk about that. Right? FYI, they was on, right? They they were on. So let's let's be 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 be, be mindful that the Deacon Defense, Malcolm X inspired the Black Panther Party, right? And these sisters and brothers got on, they not just protect the community, but serve the community, right? We have not seen that in our lifetime, right? Whereas we finally took action where things didn't fast forward now, right? You know, it's still blatant, it's still bad, but they're not in the 20s and 30s, right? And they had at the school program, they were feeding the people, they were educating the people, they were teaching self-defense, they were teaching people their rights, you know what I'm saying? Civil and human rights, right? So why are you saying this, Major? It's because we have a brother that came on the scene by the name of Grandmaster J, Jim J of Infact, who pushed this big thing about being on, right? And he spoke about him making history, going to Stone Mountain, so forth, so on, and what have you. And a lot of people were so happy about it. It was a beautiful thing in the sense whereas we see somebody stand up. But I don't want to get too far ahead of that, right? But we can't dismiss and not acknowledge our ancestors and how they paid the way for sisters and brothers, right? Today, they have what they have, do what they do and whatnot, and have the examples, right? When reflecting on how black militias Gain national attention. Let's understand 2021, 20, 2020, 2020, 2021. There was prior to that, right? There was a it was culmination of black people getting killed. And not just by police, by white people and other groups, right? And when we when we we think of, we think about the people that got killed and the names that 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 come to mind, Tamir Rice. Um, we think about Eric Gard. We think about Brian Taylor. We think about people that got killed with their hoodie on, right? Um, um, because. There was some suspicious acts, alleged suspicious activities, or whatever the case might be. BLM 
And the police violence was so bad where when we seen these protesters and what have you, it was just no protest. It was violence. And it was like, oh, white. It wasn't just no white people. Probably majority. Black people was up there cutting up too. You know what I'm saying? Like we might want to specify and try to be as graphic about who was doing what. But in the end, you had all groups of people standing up. And when the black militias came up, and when and this what got me involved, right? Because a lot of us have become socially numb to what was going on in the community because it was the same old, same old. You'll see a movement, then it die out, won't be anything, right? But when you when I seen those brothers go to Brownsville, Georgia, and from in a white community in the, in the deep south, and was on or were on and was calling for justice. And, and, and willing to shoot and kill and had the police scared to come down there, I had to check it out, right? Now, I didn't know who they were. I just hear this one say something, this one, this one say something, this one say He was different from different little groups. Then I see this brother, Jim J, just take off with his eloquence, his articulation, and what have you, right? And for you know, it was like a band of brothers trying to come together to make sense. I said, okay, cool, let me listen. Now, as I'm listening to him, right? At this time, I started my YouTube channel. I knew what I want to talk about. I just knew I had to do something. I had to say something because I know I have a struggle. I know I have a path. I know I have things I can see that might can help somebody, right? And I just wasn't about helping. I was about working with people, too. So when I seen that, then I seen them went to Louisville, my Brown, and Taylor, and they said it was going down to the last year um, behind this young brother that killed the last year police. I took my family out there, right? And we filmed together, my family. And I, right then I seen how real it was. We was going to Walmart, right? Right for the formation. And there was two white men pull up in an armed Jeep, like where they had ones and everything taken out. They were about all the ammunition in, um, in Walmart. And I was like, damn, you know what I'm saying? And when you got out there, you know, it, it was some kind of panic and some kind of feeling because you have mentally people armed out there, you know what I'm saying, about do their thing, right? And then when they found, they walked, they walked probably about a block or two, and they went in this big park, I don't know the name of the park, and the pavilion. I heard the brothers, you know, just speak. I was very touched. He touched my heart, you know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of this doc, all this documented, right? So what I did was I, I embarked on just learning more about him, and then a lot of his talking points I agree with, right? And um, at this time, you got really I'm a full-time truck driver. I'm going cross country, you know what I'm saying? And when I get a break, I'm making a video and doing something. And when I seen the reaction from our community, where it was mixed, and you had some notable figures that were speaking bad about the brother, I called them out. And then I wasn't looking like a fan, but I was playing music, giving, commemorating, doing all this stuff, right? Just to get at the people, you know what I'm saying? But little did I know, I was actually, not just me, all of us, was creating a monster in Jim J. Because see, he says written the goal was to tell people to be on and be ready for whatever, right? Stop taking the BS. Totally agree, right? And he accomplished that by doing the formations. But once he expanded, in fact, like if he was sitting on the couch, you got tired of seeing all people get killed. You stood up and did something, right? What I didn't like, he hijacked the bronze Georgia thing. Like it was his thing when it really wasn't. He was part of something of a group of men that wanted to go down there, right? So I'm cool. Ain't no big deal, right? Cool. He was part of it, so he could put his name on it. My 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 first thing in him was he was talking too much, right? Always in front of the camera, flashing guns, money, all this stuff, right? And talking a lot of, you know, rah, 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 right? And people's telling them, Jim, Jay, watch yourself, this, that, and other. He said, I ain't worried about it. I got people behind me. I'm just the face and blah, blah, blah. He said, cool, all right. And when um, I did my critique of him, right, everything just went crazy. I'm in a truck one day, and um, I'm a, I'm a, I probably flash, and I don't know, I might flash and talking about it, right? And I was saying that he's talking too much. And I was saying, 
Don't let your left hand know what your right hand do. You don't have to speak out like you're speaking out by every little, I ain't gonna say every little thing, everything, right? You already established yourself as the man, you know what I'm saying? The hour that, that that's willing to stand up for the people and bring people together. That was beautiful, right? And then he was pushing, you know what I'm saying? Hebrew Israelite faith, right? And I'm not nobody who's been spiritual or want to follow spiritual belief. My issue was we are divided by our spirituality, religions, or what have you. All this documented. I talked about this. Little did I know that even though at that critique, I still was doing videos about him. He, he, he built up a disdain toward me, right? So when the very first interview we did, and I was asking him because he was screaming and all that, as I demonstrated and show you how he looked at me, right? And he thought I changed because I went back to still talking good about him. Look, let me say this to anybody listening to me. If you have a friend or anybody around you that always yes man what you do, always agree with you, tell them get out your face. Stop dealing with them. They're not a true friend. They can't give you the real, right? Like I said, when I reacted to everything, was, in fact, Cam made me talking crazy, cussing and all this, that, and other. And I basically became immune to whenever I say something. Like even right now, I know people going to be coming in and check what I got to see. It was like, you can't say nothing about him without somebody getting upset. But it's cool for him to specifically call people out or say sly stuff about people in the movement and what have you, but say you don't call names, which is documented, you call people name out. You criticize this, you criticize that. For me, it's like, We we really don't use our eyes and see. We just be looking. And we don't really pay attention like we should, right? So as I went to pushing this brother, right, especially when he got arrested and stuff on that bogus charge, it was a bogus charge. Bad conviction, by the way, bad. I watched people that spoke about him faded in the bliss of darkness, they stopped talking about it. And I was the only one out there by myself, right? I found myself just pushing this brother, right? To one day, I made a, a constant responsible decision to start going to this court hearing. I pulled over from the post office and I was making a delivery and I announced I was going before anybody announced it was going, other than in fact members. I was allegedly the media at the time, right? But I was just a brother just speaking about what I seen, what I, what I cared about, what I think we should know, and what have you. When I pulled up, I was the only person out there representing the media for this brother. I take that back. Tall Black to me came out there. Tall Black to me came out there. He came because I said I was going out there. And I took my money. I didn't ask for no donations or what have you. I still haven't asked anybody for donations. Um, not saying I won't take them, but I understand the drama in our community with how we always asking for money and never really producing results, but just content and talking. That's not enough for our people. When I went out there, I ain't, I ain't have no connections to this, but I just met people throughout me doing my platform when I say met him, like just basically emailing, some of us probably changed numbers, right? But I had a chance to meet a lot of people that was either close to him or was in the circle, right? I didn't realize until when I was feeling he was coming out the courthouse, he said, you you come with me, right? And I followed him. And that's when I got the infamous interview where we in the parking lot and stuff, where he was, he was running. I mean, you think he was the president of the United States? I was riding around behind his brother. It was ridiculous. But anyway, he make a long story short, um, then I got the first hand, I got the first view of him and, you know, he get, he praised me off the camera, got on the camera, you know, he was very blunt about a lot of things. And, um, 
I don't know. I kind of I, I I let it be known I was offended. I I wasn't expecting all that, right? But in the back of my mind, I was like, I know you probably don't like critique them, right? And let, let me get this understood too. And you need to, people need to understand this before I agree with you. I'm the only person, only person in the in the, in, the, in the social media era that had interviewed them personally. Personally, I'm talking about not no vain in that personal interview. I've met Jim J on several occasions, been at different events, his birthday party. We have talked behind closed doors. We have texted and talked. I'm not just speaking from me watching formations. I'm speaking about my first hand in action with him, him embracing me in the circle and what have you. Him um, allowing me to interview, and, I, and I, I appreciate that. I appreciate him giving the opportunity, right? And I told everybody, I wish you can find when I originally said, I said a couple of times, the only reason why I really want to follow this brother seeing what's going on, to see where he was coming from and if it was sincere. That's all I really want to know because before I speak about you, right, I want to know you're sincere. And part of it I seen was sincere, but other part was a high question that I later find out, right? So let's 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 talk about his failure to bring people together, and secondly, how the internal self destruction in fact started. Right when Jim J really got notable and got his attention, he was falling out behind the scenes with a lot of other militia leaders. He was even falling out with people who were police militias that were supporting him. I can't tell you how many people I seen one month, next month they're gone. I can't see you know, how I seen so many people follow him and then it just it just was, I mean, gone. I, I had some people, numbers I had got from them. They said, no, they changed their number and everything. I seen Jim J. Refused to stay humble. He always had something to say. Always had the per last person. Have to, he always had to be the one with the last word. Um, this is an infamous um video to live shed where he was talking about when they all got together. They were talking about doing something to Tulsa, and how he just got into it with his brother, right? And how he would go online and say little things, right? Because see, about what, 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 what Jim J was clever at, he would throw the brick and then hide his hand and say, I don't really care this, that, and other. But he didn't hear it. In between the time he's talking, the whole 30, 40 minutes, he making all kinds of suggestions and statements and this, that, and other, and what have you. Whereas he's making you think he's trying to say this, but he, all the while he's saying this. And instead of him bringing the black militias together, it was like he was pushing them away. And, 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 and the, the, the contradiction side of it, he spoke to people openly and said, I can't do everything myself. Y'all got to get off your asses and do something too. That's how he was talking to the people. But when people started doing something, he was finding fault in it. Because to me, in my opinion, he was, no part of, he was no more part of the lamb. Like if his name, his face wasn't shown. It was something, even on my own platform, right? Even on my own platform, I can be talking about something that will invest in. People from Infect and even him, which I have receipts, they come in and gave me super chats and everything. Don't even my challenge to talk about him. And I called my own alive, and we talked after the fact. All that I got receipts on all that, right? And my thing is, the movement was is not about one person, it's about the people. And we go talk, we making history, we doing this, we doing that, and what have you. That's not something he or she or no one should say that's doing it. It's the people that should give him praise, not himself. That self anti don't go nowhere. I watch Infa started from a small group to a large group of people that, that shrunk in months. I was going to events. I realized I'm not talking from watching videos. I'm talking about I was at the events, but was fabricating numbers when there was no numbers out there. 
And the nail in the coffin that that really hurt in fact was when he got the award, he ran his mouth to meet Chex. And Meet Chex was one of the few people that had a large following that was organic, that had nothing to do with Infect and none of that. And when he talked about K Foss, as an organization, you should have rules. And he said they had rules, not talking to other out, members outside Infect, et cetera, et cetera. I watched a man just go, a man went wild. I watched some of the most reckless things, right? And people want to condemn me, your ex. And I don't give a total right, but I don't give a total wrong. But when you're telling people one thing, you show this kind of faith, they're behind the scenes, you're doing stuff like that to undermine your own people and your organization. That ain't cool. And he have not been able to shake back from that. Then on top of that, because all this talking, now you got the Morris TVs of the world coming out. You got Tariq Nasheed, all these people that, that could have lowered Jamal, all the people that could have supported him went against him. And I'm the only person that went at these people, which I should have never did that. And on this day, I dread doing it because that was a fight between them, not me, right? I just didn't like it. It was publicizing it. But I'm like, if you're constantly saying things, you're constantly patting yourself, patting yourself on the shoulder, you're constantly acknowledging what you're doing, you're not acknowledging the people around you and the people have contributed. Because don't get me wrong, he achieved his goal in showing that you can come together and be on. The problem was when he was talking about doing this other stuff, right? He failed at that. And the reason why I'm using the word fail because people still dying. In fact, and nobody pulling up. The community is still falling apart and people still killing each other in our community. Nobody pulling up. My critique of him is a genuine critique. I'm not here to try to tell him now, but I'm sick and tired of when people say something like recently when a Cody spoke about if a leader get killed, who gonna step up talking about the Hebrews were like and you the new Black Panther Party and in fact, and I'm like, hold up. Y'all still around and y'all moving in silence. People was telling him that. I was telling him that. It doesn't make no sense to even go out there and try to defend something when you know internally something wasn't right. And let, 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 let's, let's continue talking about self, let's talk about is the self-destruction of impact, right? I seen somebody build something and destroy it. Because of their ego and narcissism, they're like they're the smartest person, they know everything. And you gotta realize this man wore, wore three hats. Three. He wanted to be a general, he wanted to be a spiritual leader, and he wanted to be the president of the people. You gotta pick one, not all three. And then you didn't have no council or body government around you. You had the nation Islam looking at you, you had black militias looking at you, you had you had um active looking at you had all this and people want to talk to you but guess what you want to come on a platform like you know everything i didn't and i'm just i'm just saying let me give my give my permit i seen him on platforms right with different people would have he was like he's the smartest person in the room like he know everything go <laughs> get out of here bro get out of here you got your prayers for what you did but you stepping on a lot of people names a lot of people, I'm talking about in our ancestors, what they paved the way. And I dare you just toot your horn, man. I didn't see nothing do that. I didn't see you do that. I didn't see our people. I see our people grab guns and was getting busy. See, people understand because I kind of got away a little bit from the Black Power movement. The police was pulling them over and they was getting in shootout. They was getting killed. It was killing police. They was going to prison. All kinds of stuff was going on. None of that was going on here. He literally, he literally, even though they did him wrong, he literally got a smack on the wrist compared to people that died for doing what he had did, right? And it's not right what they did him, but my point is, I didn't want to just, just not give homes where it should be in our community with our ancestors and then take away from our people a glorious moment of coming together. This man had the ears of everybody. But because he thought he was the smartest in the room because he didn't want to talk to this, he didn't want to talk to them because they weren't thinking a certain kind of way. That's a big damn problem in our community. I don't care if you're not 100% with self-determination, 
black militias or what have you. What I care is, do you want to come together to save our community, save our people? I told him personally, right? There's all these receipts, all this in my phone, right? Where you lost me at is when you went to give me yourself accolades. You went to whine about what they was doing to you. And I'm like, damn, let's her number. You say you know history, right? And that's why I call people like him and tell you fools when you know stuff. And then when it happened, you, you crying, blood and murder. You should have known that there should be more protection on you. You have established organization. You don't have to go to every rally. You supposed to be like honorable Mr. Farrakhan, letting the ministers, <laughs> like they let the ministers go out there and speak. You let your commander speak. But no, you had to be the verse. And then on top of that, a couple more things I want to say about the self destruction, the self destruction in fact. I watch Jim just scream at melanated women, scream at melanated men over nothing. At his point, I hate to say that she might be mad I'm about to say, I'm going to call her name. People know what I'm talking about. Sister was drunk, right? Sip, tipsy, what have you. And this brother yelled at the sister and started crying, right? And there was men like me, and I did embrace and talk to him, but I felt bad because he could have whispered to one of his commanders, hey, man, go pull her aside and tell her she needs to chill. And you know what? The sister took her on the chin and, like, that's how he is, what have you. And I'm like, hell with that. It wasn't that serious. Yeah, he, he traumatized like we all traumatized. He's been through the military. He experienced the same stimulation. He experienced a lot of things that we experienced, but that wasn't right to be yelling at the sister like that. And I'm not talking about just that. Now, that's the <laughs> night in question. That's the last time I ever um, went to an event anymore, right? I was already falling because I was seeing things. Right? I was seeing people getting screaming, yelling. I mean, this harmful broke off, just this mean, tough attitude, man. I'm like, when I met the Zuma, I seen he wasn't built like that. You know what I'm saying? He was really a cool dude before that camera. He said that arm out. He put on a persona, he put on an image, and that's not cool. Also, um, is the fact that he was giving out a award that saying that his birthday. And he, he said something that messed me up. And the elder can, an elder can definitely um, attest to this because him and I went out there together, right? He was dead with side by side. He was giving out awards, right? And he said that y'all know why the ones who don't get a award, why I don't give y'all a award. You know what this man really said? And it, it shocked me because they disagreed with him. Again, let me say this. If you have a friend, that kisses your butt, that agree with you on everything, don't know how to tell you when you're wrong, or don't know how to give you competent advice, don't know how to agree respectfully, right? You don't need that friend. That was wrong from seeing them people I liked. They didn't see it at the wall for me, but he forgot to give it to him, which I don't think that was true. I didn't want no damn award. I'm not doing it for no damn award. I'm not doing it for them. I'm not doing it for the people. I don't care one person watch my video. It's not that to me. I'm not, I lost enough for rest. I, I was frustrated. Ain't gonna lie, I was really pissed. Y'all seen some of the videos, reaction videos I had. So man. You had people that came out that say they didn't never like me anyway. Don't even know me. Say they don't like me anyway. Because I spoke the truth about how he said with people that used the videos when he could have reached out to all them brothers, he reached out to me. Like, people don't know a lot of stuff behind the scenes. I was taking care of GMJ. I was calling this from out email. I was doing that, right? Just to keep the peace. But I have to hear we're watching people make excuses for him. Watch people try to justify what happened. There's no justification. They was coming, they still coming, they're not gonna stop. We just gotta be smarter. We gotta be smarter. When we look at today, what's going on, right? You cannot say anything of a presence anymore, just like you can't say the Marcus Garden movement have a presence, just like you can't say the Black Panther Party have a presence, just like you can say the Nation Islam to certain things don't have a presence like they have. They probably have a stronger presence because why? 
the powers that be. We see what happened with Malcolm Nation. We see what happened with um, Khalil Muhammad. We seen how they kept our people at the fire. I'm not condoning. I'm not suggesting. I'm not saying it's right. It's wrong. It's hella wrong. But my problem is we have to be more smarter. We can't talk about Fidel Castro. We I wouldn't do what he did. That was really about some bloodshed. That was really about putting your foot down, and making sure our political body have a verse, make sure we teach country back, make sure we get all this capitalism out there, and make sure we try to save our country. Was he perfect at it? Probably wasn't. But I don't like people comparing and talking about people like that when that was some, that was powerful for that country and those people. But let's 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 be a little more specific. When we look at GMJ, we look at Ramsey. We look at um, when I say Jim J. Ramsey, I'm just using for example, right? Um, you have the black militia, you have the, the self-termination movement and all this, that, and other. The reason why our movement cannot move forward, we don't have the numbers. And we know Jim J. had the numbers, but it was short-lived. I don't, nothing about no white man and this, that, and other. If you're not reading and you don't know what's going on with history, you got to be careful. And for me, it's like we took for, we took for granted some real stuff. And shout out to Brother Ramsey because I support what he's doing. But the brother had the numbers to do what he want to do. And you know what we still dealing with? Poverty, homelessness, joblessness. Lack of funding, violence, a lot of single moms. We have education issues. We have a number of issues that we're not addressing. And some of us with this big talk about we need this, that, and other. I'm going to ask you a quick question. How long is it going to take? Oh, man, it may take, it can take such and such time. If we come together right now, well, that may not happen. About 5, 10, 20 years. Well, in between that time, what about what our community need right now? We are the least of everybody. And Lord, because I feel like we're not able to agree. We don't understand that we're not a monolith people. We all don't think the same. We all don't believe in the same things. We're in a society that teaches how to pray, think, believe, talk, what had you. A lot of us are walking robots and it's, it's pathetic. And for me, I had to hear just us making excuses. We just have to go back to the drawing board. I'm about to talk about something real soon. I'm going to mention what I'm talking about. And this, to me, is an example of how you can fight back, even within the system. Again, this is not a bashing video. video. This is not me trying to call nobody out, but call out the fact that we have to start accepting things on the chin and realize we drop the ball. We heard all the lectures. We know about all the books. We know about all the videos. All that. There's nothing under the sun that this brother, anybody speaking about heaven, Miss Bowens, Umar Jones, Tariq, what have you, they haven't been spoken of. It. The question is how you going to respond? This is my issue for people that criticize people that's trying to get a message out. I don't care if somebody is standing outside with a sign addressing a real issue. They are doing something versus somebody who's sitting on it but trying to criticize but not doing that. I respect anybody who attempt to do something that matters. Let's let me let me let me just speak about something right quick. Show my screen. And I, and we don't talk about these people though. We don't talk about these people who, who actually responded. Y'all remember this brother here, Mikael Johnson, a government who carried out Thursday night attack in Dallas. You know, police officer dead in seven warning with military veteran appear to have identified with the Black Power movement. You know why this brother did what he did? The very thing that Jim J and all of us mad about our people just dying in the streets. I didn't hear nobody talking about him. Nobody. Even now. Right? 
What about this brother right here? I remember him, huh? Calling you Eugene Long, the bad road shooter, was an egotistical madman who referred himself as alphapreneur and life coach and series of rambling YouTube videos, including the chilling tirade in which he all urges black America to fight black against peace. I don't know why I talk about him. Bro, y'all need to miss me with all this nonsense. There are people that have stood up. Whether you agree or don't agree, they stood up because they was tired, just like Jim Jim and all the rest of us. But nobody have the right to make themselves bigger than the people. In fact, have the in fact don't have the right to just attack people. People are being critical in a righteous way about what's going on. I don't get it. I'm not just a person who went to a formation. I'm a person who met this brother on several occasions, interviews, talk with him in private room. Question that Abdul do was there. We have to realize the reason why we can't unite. Because there's nothing wrong with ego. We all have egos. Is when we think we're the smartest one in the room. And that's what makes you an intelligent fool when you know something, but you don't know how to apply it. In certain instances, you know how to apply it, but overall, you're not perfecting it, right? And for me, it's like there is so much that is just under the radar that we don't want to talk about. We don't want to face it. We got to talk about it. How can we repair the young generation? We don't sit down and say, man, you know what? We should have did this way. But when you got 20 people in the room and everybody talking, nobody trying to listen, and you may have a very person that's quiet that have an agenda, have, have a program, have the means, can probably connect the dots, probably help us connect the dots. You don't want to hear them because they're not important. I don't know how to say in a few words that we're missing the bus. A few of us get on, and then we get off. A lot of us get on, and then we get off. If the top not right, the bottom won't be right. Everybody's at the top, they have to be humble. They have to understand it's not about them, it's about the people. They gotta understand that they have to keep smart minds around them. You have to understand that they have to know how to not just articulate the message, but activate it, be active, right? If the, if just being on and doing formation is cool, all right, that's what you want to do. If you feel like you want to buy land, buy a property, you want to invest, go and do what you want to do. If you want to talk and be an advocate about something, do what you're going to do. But we have to understand that we do this, we put our community on our back. And we're saying we're trying to help our community. That means we have to work together. We have to. We pass the debating. We pass the back and forth, the undermining. Because there's too much of negativity going on in social media. Instead, we weaponize social media to get the message out. We become toxic with social media and miss the whole message. And lastly, I got to share this, brother, here, because we got to address the elephant in the room. And, and I, I got to be real with you about this. And this firsthand information, this firsthand information I'm going to talk about, this firsthand right here, right? It will really kind of like buy me the most with GMG is when he refused to help this brother right here. Old to Ozon Wallace. And I'm not even gonna repeat what he told me, but it was nothing cute. It was disparaging, it was discouraging, and what have you. And when I spoke about him on my channel, Jim Jays to come on there and literally act like somebody else and help other people in fact come in there and just saying disparaging things, go watch my videos. I have a bunch of them, I got a thousand videos and audios and what have you. Go check it out.
This way he lost me at. There was nothing nobody really said to him that harmed him that much. Whereas he could have shown disdain and dislike or hate towards another. And I don't want to say he hated the brother, but he made it all about him. Who in a position to help this brother in a situation where this brother of the few that survived incident with the police that came up on top. And still, when he got adjudicated, he didn't, he didn't get the death penalty as the state or prosecutor was trying to get. And for him not to support this brother, I couldn't respect that. So for everybody to ask me why I don't talk about Jim J and why I don't talk about NFAC, this is the reason why. There was a lot of things being said I still haven't spoken about, but there's a lot of receipts in my phone. A lot of things happened. There was a lot of fabricating. There was a lot of lying. There was a lot of undermining. It was a lot of people that that got messed over. And I got one more person, one more person I want to bring up. And this is this this oh no no I'm not gonna do that I already I already, I already spoke about that person let me not even say that but my thing is in closing we just have to admit to ourselves that there was some errors there was some grave mistakes there was there was thing that was done that did really help hurt us growing in the community, um, us building the community. Will we ever get back to that? I don't know. Cause I don't see them coming back the same. I don't see in fact coming back the same. Cause there's too much that happened right now to call yourself bouncing back and something about this. And then you know they took his gun rights right. And for me, for anybody saying, well, Major, we got to move in silence or whatever. Man, that's been said. <laughs> I even have videos critiquing the fact of, of, of not talking about it. Let me, let, let me leave these words of wisdom that I was told when I was young. You got to be about it, not talk about it. He did have shock value in what he was doing. What shock value is when a person demonstrates what they're saying? He had shock vests, but he had people coming now in large numbers, largely, you know, viewing him and whatnot, and sometimes the, um, the formation. But when you stop producing results and you just with wind up talking, people go to become the agencies wanting more. And we do too much of that. Um, I wish the brother the best. It was wrong what they did him. I swear I'm getting this freedom. If anybody that may disagree with me speaking about this, I'm not above criticism neither. You can say what you want. I got love for the book. I got love for in fact. You may don't like me after this, and that's cool. But I had to speak my piece. I'm the same brother that flew out there and was spending my money and getting rid of cars and getting hotels. I'm the same brother that missed my flight, messing with him. Had to pay another $700 to come back and offer me a penny. I'm the same brother who took my time on my business schedule to bring the information to the people. I'm the same brother who was yelled at and screamed at to the man who said, facts over feelings, but was always emotional. What you mean, feelings? If feelings in I'm like, damn, that's facts over feelings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruining everything. I think that my message, what I was trying to do with Major TV, had got drowned in all the nonsense that's going on. Because you know what? Major TV kept things clean. I never was with the profane and all the crazy stuff, right? But I can get busy. But It was crazy just looking at what I put in this. People not knowing me, calling me all kind of names, whatever. I don't know that I got busy. You know what I'm saying? I was part of the movement back in the day, and I'm proud to say that, and I'm still a part of it. Just because I'm not seeing visible, visibly, and I don't want to be seen visibly. I had my own movement, still have my own movement. I don't need nobody to tell me what to do, what I should do. I need somebody to sit down with me and let's talk about what we can do. That's what it's about with me, right? 
And I wish I could have that conversation. I had a conversation with a few people about me. But I never want to make it about me because it's not about me. It's about our people that need us right now. So I might have left some stuff out intentionally. I might not say a lot of things just because I don't come off like I'm mad because I'm not. Was I traumatized? Was I upset? Was I feeling certain kind of when I was going through what I was going through with all the crazy reactions and stuff and me speaking about certain things and what have you and people trying to judge me and say things? Yeah, because I'm not, I wasn't used to this social media stuff and I'm still not used to it. And that's one of the reasons why I don't do as many videos and shout out to Cody um, for, for just pushing me because our community, and I hate to say this, are almost damaged goods. Um, and I'm not speaking about everybody in the community. I'm talking about a nice portion of our community. And a lot of our community, even the older one the community, they are so easy to be influenced, so easy for people to say, well, don't support him. Don't do this. Don't do that. And I'm like, wow. I watched a lot of people support me. Major, major that soon as I want to do things how I want to do it, because I was never a member of NFAC and never wanted to be a member of fact. I support him, yes. You know, I have love for what they was doing. But at the same time, I want to be my own verse. And that's where it was a cross communication because people want to keep talking about GMJ, in fact, this, that. And I had the information. It wasn't in the news. Yeah, I had a brother on facing death penalty and Ota Wallace had people in our community dying, had people in our community that need some money, that need some help, that need some direction, had people in our community that have ideas and whatever that needs attention. That I, you know, like it was, I just couldn't do everything at one time. That's why I'm glad I teamed up with a code where we can do some things. But I called it, I stand tall on what I believe, right? And that even if I'm not 100% behind what you're talking about, I at least try to help out here with you out of seeing what have you. But I'm not one of the ones that's just gullible like that. I am truly different. Sadly, I'm, I'm, I'm sad. I feel bad. I came out like as a fanboy when I really wasn't. And I was called that. I remember Doofus, and I was so pissed. But the way I looked at my vision, I looked at the cricket, I'm like, damn, well, like, like, I really like I was a fanboy. I was really getting at people who was talking about Jim J. You know, and again, I applaud for what he did. And I applaud anybody in the community that's doing something for somebody who's sitting on their ass, just complaining, getting on social media, and just going on a rant. I'm not responding to that nonsense. I'm only keeping it 100. Um, if we don't come together, we're going to stay apart. If we don't wake up, we're going to stay asleep. If we understand we're 50 to 100 years behind in time, we're going to stay as far as the back of the bus as we can go. We have to realize it's our responsibility to make a difference. It's our responsibility to lead the way. It's our responsibility to teach the young. It's our responsibility to have a positive word. It's our responsibility to recognize, recognize, acknowledge the most high in everything you do. It's our job to make sure that we wake up and we go to sleep, that we live in a life of righteousness and we say and do mm -hmm. things. It means something. Sorry, I'm having trouble. Please try in a little while. Alexa, shut up. My bad. I had to cut that out. But that's my word for the day. Like and share this video. Comment, you know. I don't have no problem disagree or what have you. I don't have no problem being criticized. I've been criticized all my life. And when I was young, I didn't like criticism. But I can take it now. Um, <laughs> um, subscribe, you're new to the channel. Hit the notification bell because we drop content a lot. Major TV. I started a few years back um, just with the idea of having a message for the community. Um, just wanting to be a part of the community and the struggles and, and, and the progress and, and, and what have you, right? And we teamed up with news, facts, and comments. Um, that's a Cody to more, Cody Speaks, YouTube channel. Subscribe to YouTube channel, Cody Speaks. Also, generational um, well building, major TV, of course, and news, facts, and comments. Check out newsfactsandcomments.com. Newsfactsandcomments is newsfactsnc.net. Um, there's news, interviews, all kind of stuff on the subscribe support. We're really trying to get the message out. We're really trying to let our people know what's real and what's not. You know, so thank y'all so much for all the love and support. 
Um, y'all just stay focused, stay strong, and just be you. Peace.